So let's let's assume that we actually have cybersecurity students and aspirants and novice professionals that are interested in steering their skill set towards the goal of protecting infrastructure. We've 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 brought them in. We've done you know Parks and Rec the musical or something like that. And um, like, what are some skills that they should be learning or tasks that they should be accomplishing to show that they have what it takes to do this kind of work? Well, it really depends on where you want to go. There are some certs that, in particularly, I'll say for like the DoD, um, having something like Security Plus. That's not the high level thing you need to meet that's very much a gateway thing but that I, I took that when I was first moving into cyber um, has helped me infinitely yeah. not necessarily you know taking the cert out and saying look I have security plus but actually going through that level of education as someone who was decently familiar but didn't really understand you know, the PKI and all the basic fundamentals that you need right. to know to get your security plus certification um, something like that is really important particularly okay. when you have quals um, that are a little bit more formal. The DOD asks for it a lot. Mm -hmm. um, SANS has some great training. It's really expensive, but the fantastic training. I've taken a bunch of classes with them. Um, if you're looking at operational technology, my old office, ICS CERT has free training. So, you know, credentializing yourself is number one. Mm -hmm. Also, depending on what you want to get into, um, you know, building your own lab, so if you are interested in more, you know, how do I do things so you can say I'm doing whatever job I'm doing right now, but at home, I spend some of my free time building and architecting and doing these type of things. So again, about the bona fides. So even if you right. don't necessarily have the traditional quals and skill set, um, and again, some jobs you have to have the traditional quals and skill set, but if you don't right. are moving into something that's a little bit more flexible, mm -hmm. um, like not nuclear power, then you yeah. can you can bring some of this at home, you know, skills learning that you've picked out. Okay. And then I think the next big thing is being curious, something that helped me in learning. I mean, again, coming from foreign policy, conflict resolution, moving as a contractor and into a job about at the time it was physical security before I moved into cyber, I knew nothing about nothing. So I just asked a lot of questions. I connected with people and I said, hey, uh, that thing you're talking about sounds really interesting. I actually don't know what you're talking about. Can you, mm -hmm. yeah. can you, can you tell me more about that? And I'll give you an right. example. A um, uh, former colleague, he's now deceased. His name is Al Cook. Al worked as a medical device materials manager at a hospital system. And he would talk about the importance of on-time delivery and all these things. I had no earthly idea what he was talking about. My job at the time was just a secretariat. I was taking notes. And so one day I called him and I said, look, Al, I, I don't, this sounds really interesting. I don't know what you mean. And he spent two hours of his wow. time yeah. talking to me, mm -hmm. just educating me about what materials management is, why it's important to infrastructure, what it means to the hospital system, what happens if all these things start happening. And I can't even tell you how, what that meant to me. Mm -hmm. And because it led me down, first it gave me confidence to ask more people. Most of them were extraordinarily generous with their time. Very few slammed a door in my face. Mm -hmm. um, and, and be curious. And that yeah. genuine, authentic curiosity is going to help you. And most people who are dedicated and passionate about their job and their field are going to see that passion in you and they want to share that with you just like i'm doing here today chris mm -hmm. yeah. we we want to share the things that yes. we're passionate about we want to inspire that same passion in anybody who comes to us and say hey emily that's really interesting can you tell me more yeah. absolutely i will talk your ear off <laughs> yeah yeah especially if you've like spent a long time learning a thing it's always super fun oh my to god just, yeah sure, absolutely. how much time do you have yeah <laughs> right because so for example if you're in an industry that you're cyber adjacent but you really don't know and you're reach out to people on linkedin go to anything right. local that you have talk yeah. to representatives in your town okay and, and just talk to them find out what the issues are and even if right. you're not talking about cybersecurity, even if you're not trying to get a job ask them what their challenges are. Be curious and yeah. be bold. And it's it's a lot to put yourself out there. It really is. But mm -hmm. once you start doing it, um, especially if you're not doing it with like the intent necessarily to get hired, although that certainly mm -hmm. is your intent, but if you're doing it to learn right. and to establish your footprint and understand your, what knowledge you need, um, that's extremely helpful. And then of course, as you make connections, make friends, and then then things will flow from there, hopefully. Yeah.
New episodes of the Cyberwork Podcast are available every Monday at 1 p.m. Central. And don't forget to check out our hands-on training series, Cyberwork Applied. Each week, expert InfoSec instructors teach you a new cybersecurity skill and show you how that skill applies to real-world scenarios. Go to infosecinstitute.com learn to stay up to date on all things cyberwork.